the next the next speaker is Julia Wilburn from US Greens and she's coming from New York well there are two reasons in particular why I am thrilled to be here today the first reason is I get to say hello to so many wonderful, beautiful, green colleagues. I don't know all of you, but I know all of you think the way I do. I know everyone in this room is here to make a better world, to do something for their children, and something that most people still aren't thinking about, we're here to do something for the future. So I am just thrilled to be here. The second reason why I'm thrilled to be here is I get to talk about cities. Lots of people have love-hate relationships with cities. Lots of people in history for, for a thousand years had a love-hate relationship with cities. They're too crowded, they're too dirty, they're too hot, there's too much gossip, garbage, there's too much poverty. Hate the city. But we have a gigantic, enormous, tragic, crisis facing us right now. If we don't do something, cities won't be here. The coastal cities will be gone in, in 50 or 75 years. So many things will change if we don't do something. And that hateful city provides the opportunity to do something about the climate crisis. The first thing, uh, I live in New York City. I love New York City. I was born there. It is my home. I just think it's the best place in the world. It has eight and a half million people in it right now. The metropolitan area has 30 million people. But eight and a half million people live in a city with a population density of 60,000 people per hectare. 60,000 people living in one hectare. That should be horrible but it's not. In fact, it's dense and we have the best carbon footprint in the whole United States in Manhattan. Only 10% of the people in Manhattan own a car. They don't need to own a car because they live in a dense, small, populated city where everything is walking distance. I don't have to, I can live in my, a month in my apartment without ever having to go someplace I don't have to, uh, without walking. It's a result of density. It's a result of multiple dwelling. It's a result of what everybody says is hateful about cities. So the love-hate relationship is flipping to a love relationship only, I believe, because cities are probably 50% of the solution to that crisis that may destroy the human population. So, talk a little bit about my city and how the possibility of echo holistic solution, solutions to this uh, crisis that we're facing uh, can, does occur and can occur in my city. In my city, there are 1,700 toxic brownfields. A brownfield is a, an abandoned industrial site that cannot be developed again because it's polluted with some sort of a toxin. The normal way the city resolves that problem now is they say to developers, if you will clean this site up and then build something on it, we will give you 20 years of tax rebates. In other words, you don't have to pay taxes in New York City for services for 20 years if you will clean up this site and build something. You could build anything, build a luxury housing apartment. New York City has a horrible, horrible problem with housing. We are dense, dense, dense. We don't have enough housing. There is far more demand than there is supply. So rents in New York City are $3,000 in New York City to rent a one bedroom apartment for one month. That's because of supply demand problems related to space. So you have toxic waste sites, 1,700 of them that are undeveloped and there is a holistic solution. The Greens in New York propose it. We haven't gotten the city to agree yet, but they will have to do it one of these days. Here's the solution. Uh, it's wonderful because it solves a second problem. New York City 
support, there's 26,000 tons, that's 2,000 pounds, so 52,000, uh, 26,000 times 2,000 tons of garbage every single day in New York City generated. It is taken out of the city by diesel trucks causing hideous air pollution, particularly in poor neighborhoods, asthma as a sickness. It goes out, the, out of the city in trucks. It's trucked hundreds of miles, lots of CO2 into the air to rural areas where it's buried. It's a horror. Now, toxic waste site that I'm talking about, brownfields, and city garbage can solve each other's problem. What we don't do in New York City is separate organic waste from plastic and paper and packaging waste. We can do it. I know of cities that do do it. Rotterdam requires its citizens to separate their organic waste and it gets composted, turned into a useful product. Something, by the way, that Marx talked about 150 years ago. He called it the problem of the cities. What do you do about all the food that comes to the city and doesn't go back to the soil because it's dumped in the, in the river instead of being turned into compost and, and returned to the soil? Okay. New York City can solve its toxic waste site problem with organic waste because if you compost on a toxic waste site over a period of two years, naturally, that composting process actually takes the toxics out of the soil. You would have a cleaned up environment in which you could build the housing to solve the housing problem and you would have reduced your garbage haulage by um, a quarter. This 25% of the waste in New York City is organic. So those, those are two holistic, ec ecologically sound processes that we could put into effect right now. We don't even have to go looking for new technology that will fix the problem. It can be done uh, at this moment. And if and when the Greens get more influence, it will be done. Uh, the good news, by the way, for all of us Greens is in 2001, I was the mayor candidate for New York City. And I had a program. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I didn't get elected. <laughs> the, 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 the candidate that did get elected, incidentally, spent $72 million of his own money campaigning. Uh, but at any rate, when I was the mayor candidate, I had a program. And seven years later, later, the mayor, who is the elected mayor, is instituting many of the things in that program that nobody ever heard of then. Did he do it because of me? Probably not. Did he do it because of climate crisis? Yes. He did it because of the crisis and the fact that the cities are the solution to our crisis. And I am thrilled to be with a whole group of people that want to do the same thing, solve this planetary problem. Thank you. Thank you very much, Julia, for that uh, very practical love address to New York City. <laughs>